day and welcome, I will be answering John 2020 Mathematics Past Question 1. Calculate 3310 in base 5 minus 1442 in base 5. So let's calculate 3310 in base 5 minus 1442 in base 5. Now the options are given to us. We have 1313 one, three base 5, 2131 one, one base 5, 4302 base 5. 1103 in base 5. Now, subtracting this from this, we have to be conscious of the base which is in base 5. We have 0 minus 2. Now, 0 is smaller than 2, and the arithmetic cannot function, so we have to borrow from this one. Now, borrowing from this one will be in form of 5 because the base is in 5. The number base is in base 5. So, borrowing one from here, that is from the higher part which is the tens unit will be in form of five so now bring one from here here becomes five now five minus two will give us three now here is remaining zero we have to borrow one from here also borrow one from here too simply means we are borrowing five so we have five here now five minus four will give us one now here is remaining two also two cannot subtract four we borrow also from three and borrow one from three is in form of five now 5 plus the 2 here will give us 7. 7 minus 4 will give us 3. Now we are left with 2 here because we borrowed with 1. So 2 minus 1 will give us 1. So our answer is 1313 in base 5. And that is option A. Thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and ask questions. Day and welcome. I'll be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Past Question 2. Convert 3.1415926 to 5 decimal places. So to convert this number to 5, a number in having 5 decimal place, we're giving 3.1415926. Already, this number has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 decimal place. Now, bringing it to 5 decimal place, it simply means at decimal point, we either round up is either we round up or we round off now we only round up when the number we're discussing here is above five now let's look at it in five decimal place we have one two three four five now the number after this nine is two and two is not up to five so we cannot round up what we can only do here is to round off and by rounding off we now have three point one four one five nine so this is it in Five decimal place and that is option B. Thank you and ensure subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Hello, good day and welcome. I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Past Question 3. The length of a notebook 15 cm was measured as 16.8 cm. Calculate the percentage error to two significant figures A 12%, B 11%, C 10.71%, and D 0.12%. Now, if the original length of the notebook is 15 cm, we can now say that the error is equal to the actual length, the measured length. Error is equal to measured length minus the actual length. Now the measured length is 16.8 cm minus the actual length which is 15 cm and that will give us 1.8 cm. Now percentage error is equal to error all over actual length multiplied by 100 and that is equal to 1.8 all over 15 multiplied by 100 and that is equal to 12.00 percent so the percentage error is 12.00 percent which is option a to two significant figures thank you and ensure subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions good day and welcome i'll be answering jump 2020 mathematics past question 
four, three straight lines EF, GH, LK intersect at point O, like you can see, as shown above. If angle KOF is fifty two degree, as shown, and LOH is eighty five degree, as shown. Now we are asked to calculate the size of EOG, that is EOG, this angle here. Now angle FOH plus angle KOF plus angle LOH is equals to 180 degree now this is because they are on a straight line I can see this line LK is a straight line and angle and a straight line is 180 so angle LOH which is 5 degree plus angle FOH then plus angle KOH is sum up to 180 degree so from this we can simply see that angle FOH is equal to 180 minus 52 plus 85 and that is equals to 180 minus that's 180 minus 137 so this is equals to 43 degrees so angle FOH is equal to 43 degree now angle FOH is equal to angle EOG this is because they are alternate angles and you can see angle FOH this angle here is equivalent to this angle because they are alternate angles so therefore angle EOG is equal to 43 degree and that is option C thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Day and welcome. I'll be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 5. Express the product of 0 0.0014 and 0 0.011 in standard form. So let's express their products in standard form. Now, standard form is just a simple way in mathematics in which very small numbers are expressed or very large numbers are expressed in a simple form. Now, the product of for 0 0.0014 in standard form. We're going to have 1.4 times 10 raised power of minus 3. Now, for 0 0.011 in standard form, that will give us 1.1 times 10 raised power of minus 2. Now, the product of these two simply means 1.4 times 10 raised power of minus 3 multiplied by 1.1 times 10 raised power of minus 2. Now, this is equals to 1.4 times 1.1 times 10 raised power of minus 3 plus minus 2 so 1.4 multiplied by 1.1 will give us 1.54 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of now minus 3 plus minus 2 is equals to minus 3 minus 2 and that is equals to minus 5 so raised to the power of minus 5 and this is the answer to this question which is option D thank you and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Good day and welcome. I'll be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 6. Evaluate 81 raised to the power of 3 over 4 minus 27 raised to the power of 1 over 3 all over 3 multiplied by 2 raised to the power of 3. And the options are given below. Now, breaking this down, we have 81 raised to the power of 1 all over 4. Now, from indices, this simply represents the fourth root of 81 raised to the power of 3 minus 27 raised to the power of 3 simply means the cube root of 27 all over 3 multiplied by 2 raised to the power of 3 will give us 8 now this is equal to the fourth root of 81 is equal to 3 so we have 3 raised to the power of 3 minus cube root of 27 is 3 all over 3 times 8 is 24 now this is equal to 3 cube is 27 minus 3 all over 24 and that is equals to 24 all over 24 which is equal to 1 so the answer to this question is option b which is 1 
Thank you and just subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Good day and welcome. I'll be answering term 2020 mathematics past question 8. If two angles of a triangle are 30 degrees each and the longest side is 10 cm, ever calculate the length of each of the other sides. Now, if you have two angles of a triangle with 30 degrees, simply means that two of this angle triangle, that's two of the angles of the triangle at 30 degrees, that means they are the same. Let's assume these are the two angles. Here is 30 and here is 30. This angle is simply an isosceles triangle. The triangle is an isosceles triangle, whereby the two base angles are equal. Now, it simply means if here is 30 and here is 30, here will be what? 120 because the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degree and it said the longest side definitely here will be the longest side of this triangle is 10 centimeter now using sine rule using sine rule since both these base angles are equal simply means here is equal to this place this side is equal to this side now let's call both sides x so using sine rule we have that 10 all over sine 120 is equals to x all over picking anyone sine 30 degree now we have that when we cross multiply 10 sine 30 is equals to x sine 120 so sine 30 is one, of, 1 over 2 so we have 10 multiplied by 1 all over 2 is equals to x multiplied by sine 120 is root 3 all over 2 now these two we cancel these two here so we have that 10 is equals to x multiplied by root 3 so x is equals to 10 all over root 3 now we have to rationalize we have to rationalize this by rationalizing this we'll multiply 10 over root 3 multiplied by root 3 which is the denominator over root 3 then this is equal to 10 root 3 all over root 3 multiplied by root 3 will give us 3 so we have 10 root 3 over 3 and this is the answer to the question and that is option a thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Hello, good day and welcome. I will be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics Past Question 9. How many ways are there to assign 3 people to 5 decks with no more than 1 person to a decks? Now, this is a permutation that is a form of arrangement. Now, we are as arranging 3 people to 5 decks. So that means we have three, um, 5 permutation 3. 5 permutation 3. And like we know, n permutation r is equals to n factorial all over n minus r factorial so since we have 5 permutation 3 that will be equals to 5 factorial all over 5 minus 2 and minus 3 factorial and this is equals to 5 factorial all over 2 factorial now 5 factorial is equals to 120 and 2 factorial is equals to 2 so 120 divided by 2 is equals to 60 the answer to this question is option C, 60. Thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Hello, good day and welcome. I'll be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics past question 10. If x minus 1 and x plus 1 are both factors of equation, x to the power of 3 plus p x squared plus q x plus 6 is equal to 0. Evaluate p and q. Now, we have x minus 1 is equal to 0. Simply means x is equal to 1. And we also have x plus 1 is equal to 0. Simply means x is equal to minus 1. Now, for x is equal to 1, we have that 1 q plus p into 1 square plus q into 1 plus 6 is equal to 0 so here we have 1 cube will give us 1 plus 1 squared times p will give us p 
plus q times 1 q plus 6 is equal to 0. So from here we have that p plus q plus 7 is equal to 0. So p plus q is equal to minus 7. Now for x is equal to minus 1, we have minus 1 cube plus p into minus 1 square plus q into minus 1 plus 6 is equal to 0. Minus 1 cube will give us minus 1 plus minus 1 square will give us 1 times q will give us p. q times minus 1 will give us minus q plus 6 is equal to 0. So collecting like times p minus q minus 1 plus 6 will give us plus 5 is equal to 0. So p minus q is equal to minus 5. Now let's call this equation 1 and call this equation 2. Now from equation 1, we have that p is equal to minus 7 minus q. Now substitute this for p in equation 2. So we have for p now we have minus 7 minus q minus q is equal to minus 5 in equation 2. Collecting like terms we have minus 2q is equal to minus 5 plus 7. Minus 2q is equal to 2. Now q will be equal to 2 all over minus 2 which is equal to minus 1. So this is the value for q. Now for p will be equals to minus 7 minus 1 minus 7 minus p is equals to minus 7 minus minus 1 minus 7 minus minus 1 because we have p is equals to minus 7 minus q and q is minus 1 so p is equals to minus 7 minus minus 1 and that is equals to minus 7 plus 1 which is equals to minus 6 so p is equals to minus 6 and q is equals to minus 1 now, the option that corresponds to our answer is actually option A, minus 6, minus 1. Thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos in past question. Good day and welcome. I will be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics past question 11. Find a positive value of p in the expression 2x squared minus px plus p leaves a remainder 6 when divided by x minus p. Now I'm looking at this expression. We have 2x to the power of 2 minus px plus p. Now leaves a remainder of 6. It simply means that this expression is equal to 6 when divided by x minus p. That means x minus p is a factor of this expression. And that will give us what 6 when you divide x minus p and um, this equation or this expression by x minus p so it simply means that x minus p is equals to 0 and that x is equals to p so since x is equals to p we can simply say that 2x square minus p is equals to x x equals to p so we have x times x and that will give us x square plus x is equals to p so p here will represent as x is equals to 6 so 2x squared minus x squared will give us x squared plus x is equal to 6. We have x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now, factorizing this, we have x squared. So we're looking for two numbers that when added together will give us 1, which is the coefficient of this x, and when multiplied together will give us minus 2. And that will be plus 3 minus 2 is then minus 6 is equal to 0. Now factorizing this, we have x into x plus 3 minus 2 into x plus 3 is equal to 0. So the two factors here is x plus 3, x minus 2 equals to 0. But the answer says we should find the positive value. Now to find the positive value, we have to pick x minus 2. So for the positive value, we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 2. So this is the positive value of x because if we pick x plus 3 if we pick x plus 3 equals to 0 x will be equals to minus 3 which is not a positive value so the positive value of x is 2 and that is option b thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos in past question and welcome I'll be answering jam 2020 mathematics past question so an interest rate of one and a half percent per month is the same as what's rates for one year now we have an interest rate 
of 100 by 1 and a half percent per month. That is 1 and a half percent per month. Now we are asked to find the same rate for one year. Now in one year, there are 12 months. So per year, it will be 1 and a half percent multiplied by the number of months in a year, which is 12 per year. And then 1 and a half multiplied by 12 will give us 18 percent per year. And the answer to this question is option A, 18 percent. Thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos in the past question. Day and welcome. I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 13. The graph of fx is equals to x square minus 5x plus 3 causes the x axis at the point. That means this question is trying to say that we should find the point at which this the graph having this equation crosses the x axis. Now, looking at this expression, you see that it's a, what it is a quadratic expression. So, for us to find the point at which the graph crosses at the x-axis, we have to what, solve this quadratic equation to find the various values of x, and that will give us what the point at which what the graph crosses the x-axis. Now, we have x square minus five x plus six. X square minus five x plus six. Now let's equate it to zero. So now we need two numbers which when added together will give us minus 5 and when multiplied will give us 6 and those numbers are minus 3 and minus 2. So we have x square minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is equals to 0. Now x into factorizing we have x into x minus 3 then minus 2 into x minus 3 is equals to 0. That means x minus 3 into x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can have two positive value of x. It means x minus 3 is equal to 0, x is equal to 3, or x minus 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to 2. So when y equals to 0, we have that x is equal to 3. So for the first value, we have x comma y is equal to 3 comma 0. And for the second value, this is x1, x2. Second value, that will be 2, comma, 0. So, the answer to this question actually is option D. You can see 2, comma, 0 and 3, comma, 0. So, this is the answer to the question. Thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos in past question. Hello, good day, and welcome. I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 14. An equilateral triangle of sides 2 cm is inscribed in a circle. Find the area of the circle. Now, an equilateral triangle simply refers to a triangle that has its three sides equal and also has all its angles the same. Now, the options are 4 pi cm square, 8 pi cm square, 4 all over 3 pi cm square, and D 3 all over 4 pi centimeter square now let's just take a pictorial representation of this we have a circle and then an equilateral triangle inscribed in the circle like this now looking at this you know that this is not actually the radius of a circle let's assume this is the center of a circle and let's take a point here down here and a point down here now since all sides of the circle are is two centimeter because it's the same and all the angles also should be 60 degree now if here is 60 degree there is a law from cyclic quadrilateral that says that the angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference so if here is 60 here should be 120 degree now if this is 120 degree we can simply find these two angles because here is r and here is r this now marks the radius of the circle so they are both the same now this triangle here is an isosceles triangle let me bring it out there's a small triangle there now 
factors i just brought out this triangle now so this is this triangle here so here is 120 degree so definitely here will be 30 degree and here also will be 30 degree meanwhile here is two centimeter and remember here represent the radius of the circle so we have to find what the radius of the circle now using sine rule using sine rule we can simply say that r let's pick any of them r all over sine 30 is equals to one um, two centimeter all over sine 120 sine 120 so from here when we cross multiply we'll have r sine 120 is equals to 2 sine 30 now this will give us r multiplied by sine 120 is root 3 all over 2 is equals to 2 multiplied by sine 30 is 1 over 2 so 2 we cancel 2 giving us 1 so now we have that r will be equals to 1 all over root 3 over root 2 and that is equals to 2 all over root 3 now we have to we have to rationalize this because you can't pick this as our final answer rationalizing this we multiply the numerator by the denominator and also the denominator by the word denominator which is root 3 so this is that means r is equals to 2 root 3 all over root 3 multiplied by root 3 will give us 3 so r is 2 root 3 all over 3 now area of the circle like we know area of cycle is equals to pi r squared so this is equals to pi multiplied by 2 root 3 all over 3 multiplied by 2 root 3 all over 3 which is the radius of the cycle so this is equals to pi multiplied by 2 times 2 will give us 4 and 3 root 3 multiplied by root 3 will give us 3 all over 3 times 3 now 3 we cancel 3 so therefore we have this is equals to 4 all over 3 pi centimeter square so the area of this circle is 4 all over 3 pi centimeter square and that is option c thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions and welcome i'll be answering jump 2020 mathematics past question 15 solve the following inequality so we're given x minus 3 into x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 0 this simply means that x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0 and x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0 mm -hmm. So from here we'll have that x is less than or equals to 3 and from here we have that x is less than or equals to 4. Now combining these together will give us 3 is less than or equals to x and which is less than or equal to 4 and that is option A. Thank you and you subscribe to the channel for more videos and ask questions. Today and welcome, I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Past Question 16. The fourth term of an AP is 13, while the tenth term is 31. Find the 21st term. The options are given A175, B85, C64, and D45. Now, looking at this question, it is an arithmetic progression, and like we know, Cn is equals to A plus N minus 1 D. Now, the fourth term, which is T4, can be expressed as a plus now n is 4 4 minus 1 will give us 3 3 times d will give us 3d is equals to 13 let's call this equation 1 and then for c10 the 10th term we have a plus 9d that's 9 minus um, 10 minus 1 times d is equals to 31 let's call this equation 2 now from equation 1 we can say that a is equals to 13 minus d let's call this equation 3 now let's substitute 13 minus d for a in equation 2 that is wherever we see a in equation 2 we should put 13 minus d 
so we'll be having now from equation 2 we have a plus 9d is equals to 31 so that will be instead of a we'll have 13 minus d 13 minus 3d sorry it's supposed to be 3d from equation 1 it's supposed to be 13 minus 3d not just d so we have 13 minus 3d then plus 9d is equals to 31 so collecting like terms we'll have we'll have minus 3d plus 9d is equals to 31 minus 13 and this will give us 6d is equals to 18 so d is equals to 18 all over 6 and d is equals to 3 now from equation 3 we have that a is equals to 13 minus 3d that means a is equals to 13 minus 3 times d which is 3 so a is equals to 13 minus 9 which is equals to 4 now since we have the value of the common difference which is d and the value of the first term which is a we can now find the 21st term t21 which is equals to 4 plus 21 minus 1 multiplied by common difference which is 3 so t21 is equals to 4 plus 20 multiplied by 3 and that is equals to 4 plus 60 and that is equals to 64 so the 21st term of this ap is actually 64 Thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. I'll be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics past question 17. Simplify x squared minus 1 all over x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. Now, we have to simplify this. We have x square minus 1 all over x cubed minus 2x square plus x minus 2 now simplifying this we'll have x minus 1 square all over x cubed minus 2x square plus x minus 2 now this is equals to x minus 1 into x minus 1 all over now we can say here now factorizing this we can say x into now this one will give us x square because x times x square will give us x cubed minus 2x plus 1 x times 1 will give us x close bracket and minus 2 so from this we can say this is equal to now open on this bracket x times x will give us x square x times minus 1 will give us minus x minus 1 times x will give us minus x and minus times times 1 will give us my m plus 1 minus 1 times minus 1 all over x into x square minus 2x plus 1 minus 2 now simplifying this we'll have x square minus 2x plus 1 all over x into x square minus 2x plus 1 minus 2 now this we cancel this as this here one this we cancel this so this is equals to 1 all over x minus 2 and that is option d thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions and welcome i will be answering jam 2020 mathematics past question 19 if a asterisk b is equals to plus square root of a plus a b evaluate two asterisks into bracket 12 asterisk 27 now given this from the binary operation given to us you can simply say two asterisk into bracket 12 asterisk 27 now for us to evaluate this we have to deal with the brackets first now the bracket is two asterisk 27 and that will give us square root of 12 multiplied by 27 which is equal to the square root of 324 which is equal to 18 now we can now go back to the question and say 2 asterisk the bracket now which is 18 and that is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by 18 which is equal to the square root of 36 and that is equal to 6 so the final answer to this question is actually 6 thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions and 
welcome. I'll be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 20. Which of the following represents the largest amount of money? Which of the following represents the largest amount of money? 300% of 1,000, 2% of 100,000, 50% of 7,500, and 3% of 100,000. Now let's briefly analyze each of them. Option A says 300% of 1,000. Now 300% of 1,000 simply means 300 over 100 multiplied by 1,000, and that will give us what? 3,000. Now 2% of 100,000 simply means 2 all over 100 multiplied by 100,000. This 0, we cancel the 0, and then 2 times 1,000 will give us 2,000. Now 50% of 7,500 will give us this 0, we cancel the 0. Now 50 times 75 now will give us 3,000. 725 naira. Now, 3% which is option D of 100,000, that is 3 all over 100 multiplied by 100,000 is equals to 3,000 naira. Now, looking at this, you see that the largest amount of money here is option C, which gives us 3,725 naira. So, the 750 naira, sorry. 750 naira. So the answer to this question is actually option C. Thank you and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Good day and welcome. I'll be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics past question 21. Find the value of K if this 3 by 3 matrix is given. Look at the K here, and we have to find the value is equals to 23. That is the determinant of this matrix is 23. Now, expressing this matrix, we have plus minus plus. Now, when we have plus, and we'll pick this first side, which is minus 2. Now, we won't pick anything on that is minus 2 again. So, we're going to be picking, and we won't pick anything on the row and the column of minus 2. So, what we're going to be picking now will be 1, K, 3, minus 1. And the next is minus 1, we're picking 2, k, 1, minus 1. Then the next is plus 1. Then we're picking 2, 1, 1, 3. Everything equals to 23. So here we have minus 2 into 1 times minus 1 will give us minus 1, minus 3k, minus 1. 2 times minus 1 will give us minus 2, 1 times 1 will give us minus k. Then plus 1 into 2 times 3 will give us 6. 1 times 1 will give us 1 minus 1. So we have opening the bracket 2 plus 6k. Then minus 1 times minus 2 plus 2 minus 1 times minus k plus k. Then 6 minus 1 will give us 5 times 1 will give us plus 5 is equals to 23. Now, collecting like terms, we'll have 7k plus 9 is equals to 23. Now, 7k is equals to 23 minus 9. 7k is equal to 14. Now, k is equals to 14 all over 7, which is equal to 2. And that is option B. So, the value of k in this 3 by 3 matrix, which is this, is 2. Thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Good day and welcome. I'll be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Past Question 23. In a triangle XYZ angle Y xz is equals to 44 degree and angle xyz is equals to 112 degree calculate the acute angle between the internal bisector of angle xyz and angle xzy now the options given are 12 degree 56 degree 68 degree and 78 degree now let's go back to the question we are given a triangle xyz let's represent this triangle x y 
and z now angle yxz is 44 degree that is yxz here is 44 degree then angle xyz is 112 degree xyz which is here is 112 degree now since we know that the sum of angle in a triangle is 180 we can simply get the angle of the value of angle xzy and that will be 180 minus the sum of 44 plus 112 and that is 180 minus 156 and that will give us 24 degree so this angle here is 24 degree now the question says we should calculate the angle the acute angle between the internal bisector of angle xy and angle xzy so let's bisect this angle like this and also bisect this angle like this it simply means we are dividing these two angles into two now dividing these two angles into two angle 112 degree here will become 56 degree which is this part and then this 24 degree by setting it into two will give us what 12 degree now the acute angle between the internal bisector will be 56 degree plus 12 degree and that is equal to 68 degree so the answer to this question is actually option c 68 degree thank you and ensure should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Good day and welcome. I'll be answering JAM 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 24. The average of all grades of a certain test was 90. If the average of the 8 male student grade was 87 and the average of the female grade was 92, how many females took the test? A, 8, B, 9, C, 10, and D, 12. Now, <coughs> let's deal with the average of the male first. Now, average of male is 87. And the number of males that took the test is it's from the question so that means 87 is equals to the total male score all over the number of male which is 8 and that means that the total male score is equals to 8 times 87 and that will give us 696 now for the females the average grade for female is 92 which is equals to the total female score all over the number of female now the number of female is unknown let's call it n so from here we can say that the total female score is equal to n times 92 and that will give us 92 n now the average of all grades average of all grades is equal to 90 this simply means that 90 is equals to the sum of the total score of male which is 696 plus that of female which is 92 and all over this number of male plus number of females now number of male is 8 and the number of female is n which we don't know so plus n now when we cross multiply we we'll have 90 into 8 plus n is equals to 696 plus 92 n opening the brackets we have 720 plus 90 n is equal to 696 plus 92n now collecting like them so we have 92n minus 90 is equal minus 90n is equal to 720 minus 696 this will give us 2n is equal to 24 and dividing both sides by the quotient of n which is 2 2 we cancel 2 and 2 here 1 2 in 24 is 12 so therefore n is equal to 12 and like we know n here represents the number of female that took the test so the number of female that took the test is equal to 12 which is option d thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Hello, good day and welcome i'll be answering jump 2020 mathematics past question 25 two perpendicular lines pq and qr intersect at this given point with these coordinates if the equation of pq that this line pq is this find the equation of line qr now for line pq we're given that the equation of this line is x minus 2y 
plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, we can have this as same 2y is equal to x plus 4. Dividing both sides by 2, we have y is equal to x all over 2 plus 2. Now, this is the equation of the first line, which is pq. Now, from this first line, we can deduce that our gradient, which is m, is equal to 1 over 2. Now, for line qr, let the gradient be m1. Now, because this line is perpendicular to line pq, we can say that m, which is the gradient of line P, pq, is equals to, I mean m1, which is the gradient of line qr, is equals to minus 1 all over m, which is the gradient of line pq. So we can say m1, the gradient of line qr, is equals to minus 1 all over 1 over 2, and that is equals to minus 2. So now deducing the equation of the line qr, we can say y minus minus 1 is equals to m1 into x minus x which is 1 so we have y plus 1 is equals to now m1 is minus 2 minus 2 into x minus 1 so y plus 1 is equals to minus 2x plus 2 now bringing it bringing all of them to the left hand side we'll be having 2x plus y plus 1 minus 2 is equals to 0 so 2x plus y plus 1 minus 2 is equals to minus 1 is equals to 0 and this is the answer to the question 2x plus y minus 1 is equals to 0 and that is option d so this is the equation of the line qr thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Day and welcome i will be answering jump 2020 mathematics past question 26 p is on the locus of points equidistance from two given points x and y uv is a straight line through y parallel to the locus if angle pyu is 40 degree find angle xpy these are the options given now let's go back to the statement and read this carefully we have a line x between a line x and y that's let's assume this is a line x y then there's a locus which is equidistance from these two points x y that means the locus is present at the distance equidistance from x and also equidistance from y now this is a locus now p is a point on this locus so we don't know where p is located but from the information we are given that uv is a straight line through y so through y we have another straight line Let's assume this is y. We have another straight line called u v. And it is said that angle p y u. That means if angle p y u is an acute angle, that means p will be located somewhere here. So let's call this place p. So that's angle p y u, which is this angle here, is said to be what 40 degree. Now, if angle p y u is 40 degree, like we know this is the right angle, then this angle here, which is angle angle x y p x y p will be equals to 90 minus 40 degree and that is equals to 50 degree so this angle here will be 50 degree now we are asked to find angle x p y x p y so let's connect here to this x so we are looking for this angle here x p y now like we know since this locus is equidistance from y and also equidistance from from x that means this point and this place are equal and having this you study this is a note isosceles triangle and for an isosceles triangle the base angles are also equal so it simply means that angle p x y p x y this angle here is equals to angle x p y so angle p x y is equals to angle x y p and that is equals to 50 degrees so this angle is also 50 degree now to get this angle which is angle xpy angle xpy will definitely be equals to 180 minus 50 degree plus 50 degree because the sum of angle and triangle is equals to 180 
and since here is 50 here is 50 to find here we just simply add here and subtract from 180 and that is equals to 180 minus 100 and that is equals to 80 degree so angle xpy is equals to 80 degree which is option b thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and fast questions Good day and welcome. I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 27. The base diameter of a cylinder is 14 cm while the height is 12 cm. Calculate the total surface area if the cylinder has both a base and a top. The options are given here. Now, let's assume we have a cylinder like this. And it is given that the height of this cylinder is 12 cm and that the base diameter this is the base now the base diameter here is 14 cm it simply means that if the diameter d is 14 cm the radius will be equals to 14 all over 2 which is equals to 7 centimeter now the formula for calculating the total surface area of a cylinder is given as 2 pi r into r plus h that's the area of the top and bottom circle plus the area of the curved surface area plus the curved surface area now this is equals to 2 multiplied by 22 all over 7 times 7 which is the radius into that's multiplied by 7 plus 12 now 7 we cancel 7 2 times 22 will give us 44 multiplied by 7 plus times plus 12 will give us 19 now 44 multiplied by 19 is equal to 836 centimeter square so the total surface area of this cylinder is 836 centimeters square which is option a thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions welcome i'll be answering jump 2020 mathematics past question 28 the schoolboy lying on the ground 30 meter away from the foot of a water tank so I uh, observe that the angle of elevation of the top of the tank is 60 degree. Calculate the height of the water tank. Now the values are given to us as 60 meters, 30 root 3 meters, 20 root 3 meters, and 10 root 3 meters. Now let's assume this is the water tank with height h and then the boy lies on the horizontal floor. Let's assume this is the position of the boy, and he lies 30 meters away from the floor of the tank. Now, the angle of elevation is said to be 60 degree. It simply means that here too is 60 degree. Now, using tan, we can simply find h, because tan 60 degree is equals to h all over 30, and therefore h will be equals to 30 multiplied by tan 60 so h is equals to 30 multiplied by root 3 tan 60 in short form is root 3 and this is equals to 30 root 3 meters so the answer to this question is option b 30 root 3 meters thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions Good day and welcome. I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 29. QR is a triangle. QRS, sorry, is a triangle with QS 12 cm, angle RQS 30 degree, and angle QRS 45 degree. Calculate the length of RS. Now, this is a triangle given. The triangle is QRS. QRS. Now, we just say that line qs is 12 meters angle rqs rqs is 30 degree and angle qrs is 45 degree now we are asked to find line rs which is this place this side here now using sine rule using sine rule we have that 12 all over sine 45 is equal to rs all over sine 30 and so cross multiply we have 
12 sine 30 is equal to rs sine 45 now 12 sine 30 will be equal to 1 all over 2 is equal to rs multiplied by sine 45 is equal to 1 over root 2 now 12 multiplied by 1 over 2 will give us 2 here 1 2 into 6 so we have 6 is equal to rs multiplied by 1 over root 2 that means rs all over root 2 that means rs is equal to 6 root 2 meters and that is option b thank you and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos fast with Good day and welcome. I will be answering Jam 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 34. An interest rate of 6.5% for half year is the same as as what rate for one year? Now we have 13%, 15%, 31% and 18%. Now, if you're given 6.5% interest for half a year, this is the same thing as saying that since this is for half a year, now for a year it will be six and a half multiplied by two for a year that's for one year and that will be equals to six and a half is the same thing as same 13 all over two multiplied by two two we cancel two and that is equals to 13 percent for one year so the answer to this question is option a 13 percent thank you and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past question Hello, good day and welcome. I will be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics Pass Question 35. If the rate and principal are kept the same but the time is doubled, what would be the effect on the interest? Now, the interest here is a simple interest. And like we know, simple interest I is given as PRT all over 100. That is the principal amount times the rate times the time over 100. This I here represents the simple interest. Now, if the principal P and the rates are remains the same or are kept the same and the t that's the time of the interest simple interest is doubled so we're having i is equals to p r then multiplied by 2t all over 100 now this the effect of this time doubling will, what, will be doubling of the interest that is the interest will also double for instance if Let's assume P is equal to 10 and the rate R is equal to 2. And then let's assume the time given also is, let's say, 1 year. Now we can say that I is equal to 10, which is the principal amount, multiplied by 2, which is the rate, then multiplied by 1, which is the time. Now 10 times 2 will give us 20, and 20 multiplied by 1 will give us. 20 all over 100 and that will be equals to 0 0.2 now let's double the time and leave the principal amount and the rate the same so we'll be having i is equals to 10 multiplied by 2 then multiply by 2 now instead of 1 over 100 and that will be 10 times 2 will give us 20 multiply by 2 will give us 40 and 40 divided by 100 will be equals to 0 0.4 so you can see that the interest now is double the former interest. So doubling the time, we also want to double the interest, and that is option B. Interest will be doubled. Thank you, and ensure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and fast questions. and welcome i will be answering jump 2020 mathematics pass question 36 the mean and the range of the set of numbers 1.2 1.0 0 0.9 1 1.4 0.8 1.2 and 1.1 are m and r respectively that is m representing the mean and r representing the range now we are asked to find the sum of the mean and the range the options are 1.11 1.65 1.85 and 2.45 
Now a mean simply represents average and is given as the sum of the numbers 1.2 plus 1 plus 0 0.9 plus 1.4 plus 0 0.8 plus 1.2 plus 1.1 all over the num total number of data given which is 8. Now this is equals to 8.4 all over 8 which is equal to 1.05. So the mean is 1.05. Now the range is equals to the highest number minus the lowest number. So R is equal to 1.4, which is the highest number, minus 0 0.8, which is the lowest number, and that is equal to 0 0.6. Now M, which is the mean, plus R, which is the range, is equals to 1.05 plus 0 0.6 and that is equals to 1.65 which is option B. Thank you and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Good day and welcome. I'll be answering the Jump 2020 Mathematics past question. 37. A die has four of its faces colored white and the remaining two colored black. What is the probability that when the die is thrown two consecutive times, the top faces will be white in both cases? Now, option A says 2 over 3, B says 1 over 9, C says 4 over 9, and D says 1.36. Now, the die has four of its faces colored white, and like we know, the entire number of faces of a die is 6. Now, if four of it is colored white, the probability of getting a white face will be equals to four all over six, which is equal to two over three. Now, but the die is thrown two consecutive times, so probability of getting white two consecutive times will be equals to two all over three multiplied by two over three. And that is equals to 4 all over 9. Therefore, the answer to this question is option C, 4 over 9. Thank you, and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and past questions. Hey, and welcome, I'll be answering John 2020 Mathematics past question 39. If A is true, then B is false. It's logically equivalent to which of the following? I, if A is false, B is true. I, I, if B is false, then A is true. I, 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 if B is true, then A is false. Now, A says I only, B says I and I, I only, C says I, I and I, I, I only, then D says I, I, I only. Now looking at this statement, this statement says if A is true, then B is false. Now this simply means that if B is also true, that A will be false. Because A is dependent on B and B is dependent on A. So A implies B and B also implies A. So when B is false, definitely A will be true. And when A is true, B will be false. Also, when A is false now, it implies that B will be true, and when B is true, A will be false. So the answer to this question actually is option D, which is I, I, I only. Thank you, and you should subscribe to our channel for more videos and past questions. Good day and welcome. I'll be answering Jump 2020 Mathematics past question 40. The geocenter of two positive number is defined as the positive square root of their product. If the geocenter of 5 and x is 9, what is the value of x? Now the option says 16.2, 6.7, 11.3 and 13.0. Now it is said that the geocenter of two positive values, let's assume we have x and y. Now the geocenter of these two positive numbers is given as the positive square root of their product x y now it is given that the geocenter of 5 and x is equals to 9 it simply implies that this 
positive square root of 5x is equal to 9. Now from this we can see 5x is equal to 9 square, meaning that 5x is equal to 81. So therefore x is equal to 81 all over 5, which is equal to 16.2. So the value of x is 16.2, which is option A. Thank you and you should subscribe to the channel for more videos and fast questions.